little podcast like this. <laughs> no? What do you think? <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast, episode seven. Share or save? <laughs> I'm your host, Steph. This is my co-host, Roland. Started out in the chair, didn't really like the chair, so now we're going to try it with me holding Roland. This should be an interesting adventure in podcasting. <laughs> this week he is 10 weeks old, and he is a massive 15 and a half pounds, 25 and a half inches long. So he is right on 50th percentile for a five month old. <laughs> which is not what he is. He's just over two and a half months. So, um, he's a big guy. And now he's eaten and burped and changed and he's just, I thought we could just hang out and record a podcast, but he seems to have other ideas in mind. So, here we go. We're going to try and it could be a choppy episode and if it is, well, I'm sorry. So, uh, moving into what's on my needles. I have been working on um, a pair of plain stockinette socks. Uh, sorry, no, I'm not working on stockinette socks. These are, see, brain gone. These are the um, Moran, meandering, there we go, took a minute to get the word right. Meandering zigzag uh, circular and, you know, it'd be nice if I looked up the pattern that I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't have it written down anywhere. Ah! Okay, well, there are the, um, there'll be links in the show notes for these socks. So I finished the first one. I am using 3U's Twisted and Fiber. This is the Tweedles colorway, as in Tweedledum and Tweedledee from... Alice in Wonderland. It is a self-striping yarn with great, um, like a gold, a red, and a blue, royal blue color. Um, I absolutely love these socks, but unfortunately, after finishing the first one and trying it on, the pattern calls for all of a, a lot of knit twos together, or SSKs, which causes the, you know, the zigzag, the points to form. That also, um, affects the size of each row. So even though I cast on my normal 64 stitches on US size one and a half, 2.25 millimeter needles, I, I'm not sure about that. I, um, I tried them on at the heel, getting them up my leg, it was just all a little too tight. So as I was going along, before I finished them, about this point here where the last gold row starts, I threw in some, I stopped doing the knit two together and only did the yarn over portion, which to give it some shaping for the back of the calf. Um, I don't know if you can tell it's a little wider there. Let me see. Yeah, you can. You can tell it bows a little bit. Here, how can I show this? It bows a little bit at the gold and then it cinches in again where the ribbing is. So give it a little calf shaping, but still it's not the most comfortable sock. For some reason in through the instep, the heel and the instep across my foot. I'm not wild about it. It fits. I can wear it. I just have more comfortable socks and knowing that it's less comfortable means it's going to sit at the bottom of the sock pile and not get worn as much as other things could have. So, um, hang on. Since we're doing so good, like, I must go close to you. <laughs> Hopefully you can still see him. Um, yeah. So knowing that it's going to sit at the bottom of my sock drawer, I'm going to uh, finish these as a Christmas gift for someone who wears a size smaller sock than or size smaller shoe than I do. So they should be fine and fit her perfectly. So finish the first one and cast on the second one. And as of right now, I am doing the gusset increases. So it's a toe up. I convert all my patterns to toe up. Um, yeah, love knitting with this yarn. It, the pattern is really simple, easy to pick up and throw down and run if you need to. So yes, yes, Roland is quite the fan of the colors of the blue and the red and the gold and the baby talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is what I've been working on, uh, or one of my projects. 
And then the other thing I've been working on, new this week, or this time around, I should say, are, it's a Wendy Johnson pattern. It is called Mittens. Have you seen this before? It's a sock, that's a sock. It's a color work, or, yeah, it's a color work mitten pattern. Um, I wanted to do this for quite some time, and the SSK knit along for November of Wendy Johnson patterns was the excuse I needed to cast on and get going with it. So I took a morning and played around in the fingering weight yarn bin. So this pattern um, calls for Madeline Tosh Tosh sock. I have plenty, well I don't have plenty, I have some Tosh sock but they wouldn't have been nice as color work. So I started going through my fingering weight solid colored yarn bin and picked out a couple of Knit Picks yarns, a couple of colorways of Knit Picks Essentials. I think it's Essential or it's Essential Stroll. Yeah, you can see it's not on a needle. Um, I realized that the... Yeah, you're not a fan of it either, are you? No. The pattern or the gauge is nine stitches to the inch. I've never gotten that in my life. And she's using... Sorry, it's folded right in a very odd place. Gauge, nine stitches, and nine rows to the inch. Yeah! Please hold. Please hold. Somebody wants to bounce. Somebody wants to bounce. Okay, so she was using, I think, size two or two and a half needles. I knew that wasn't going to work, so I went up a needle size because the hand circumference was eight inches, and after my recent... Um, excursion with color work and the Veritas, I was like, okay, no. You can't make this much noise. You're quite distracting. You're quite distracting. Yes. Back again. Somebody needed a nap, so I'm sorry. That's all you get for rolling today. But, um, which is probably good because I can be a little more coherent in my thought process. So, um, the mittens, as I was trying to tell you about, have a gauge of nine stitches and nine rows to the inch, which would mean I would need to use super tiny needles to get that, like size ones or maybe uh, zeros. Um, I've never gotten anything that small. I don't know if you can see her, but is it is uh, is saying hi now? She wants to sit and roll and see. Um, but then the circumference of the hand is. Eight inches, and I know that that's not going to be big enough for my hand after the Veritas funness, the funness that was the Veritas color work um, mitts. So she suggests using US 2 2.75 millimeter needles, and I decided to use US 3s, thinking that, okay, so my gauge is going to be off, right, using a larger needle, so the total. It'll be fewer stitches per inch, which will yield a larger mitt, which is larger circumference, which is what I wanted, um, because eight isn't enough. I needed closer to nine. So I picked out my yarns. Hang on. I've got them right here. <laughs> I grabbed, yeah. So before I had a kid, I never sat on the floor. Now I sit on the floor all the time. I think it's these stupid seats. I want to be close to those. Um, so this is, I use Knit Picks Essential kettle dyed and the color I don't know what the color is but that's one color and this was the other color and I thought oh those are contrasting enough this should be fine right I should be able to see because the um, I don't know if you can tell but it's letters it's you know the terms pearl two together yarn over uh, SSK things like that is what makes up the top of the mitten so I thought oh these will be fun cast on Corrugated ribbing, is that what it's called? When you purl in a different color than you knit with for the ribbing. It's very slow and tedious, and I'm not a fan of doing it, but I absolutely love the end result. So, uh, slog through it, get through it, get through it, fine. I um, start the actual color work portion, right? So I keep the dark brown as my main color and use the golden color as what will be the words start the thumb gusset, everything's going fine. I can put it on. It's a little tight, a little fitted, um, but I wasn't too worried about it. 
looks good, right? And you want the cuff on your mittens to be nice and tight. And as I start the first row of things, make one through the back loop, I realize there is no contrast or not enough between these two. So let me just see. It's on this side. So here. I'm getting closer here. So I'm probably like super in your face. You can't see, right? So there are X's there. You can't see the X's. All you can see are that they're a little flecks of golden color. And the, um, I did three rows of, it's coming apart now since I cut it off the needles, but three rows of the letters and you couldn't read it. So I just said, to heck with this, right? Took it off. Sad, Ooh, sitting on it, pulling more off it. So yeah, I just took it off the needles, walked away. Then I thought, well, I'll try it again, try it another way. This time I'll use worsted and I'll use bigger needles. So I pulled out, and all of this is to match my red wool coat. Like I have a knee length London Fog heavy duty red wool coat. That's my winter coat. That's what I wear to work every day. So I wanted mittens to match that. Um, <clears throat> so I pulled out Mission Falls 136 Merino Superwash 100% merino wool right discontinued yarn but it's it's a spot on for the shade of red of my coat so i was like okay that'll be great i'll do the letters in that and for the base i'll use this valley yarns um super wash dk gray color gray and red come on people that has to be enough of a contrast for it to work and i went up to a u.s size 5 needle for this and i thought well it'll be dense color work so I get going on it, <clears throat> and you can see, like, I know it cinches in. The more rows you do, the more it cinches in. But right now, that is, um, I can fit two extra fingers into my cast on, which means it's going to be a very loose mitten. I'm semi-disheartened. I'm not completely disheartened. I could, yes, hello is it, I could, um, I probably will keep going, although with all this stupid corrugated ribbing, but, um, uh, get through the 20 so rows of that and then start the color work and see how it goes. If the mitten's a little loose, everyone can agree. A loose mitten is fine. A too small mitten is useless. So that's where this is at. I had wanted to complete this for the um, SSK summer, super summer knit away, knit along. Um, and it has to be finished by the end of November. Here it is, November, I don't know, 16, 17. And I've got that much done. In my old life, no problem. I could bang this thing out in two weekends of knitting. No, pff, not even. Less than that. But as things go now, probably unlikely to happen. So I'll just keep working on it, checking away. That's what's currently on my needles. Um, I have nothing finished to show you. Nothing more about knitting, per se, my knitting. So let's talk about some things. Oh, I do have something finished to show you. I'm so silly. I forget things. And luckily, everything is near at hand. So I did finish something this week. It's so simple that I'm... I wrote it off in my head. So this is a... Hat for Roland. What a surprise! Another hat for Roland. Look, there's a difference. There are house hats and there are outdoor hats. And you have to have a good supply of both. So this week he's been wearing the knitted helmet that I made probably two years ago. It was before we were planning on having kids. I just had a pattern and some yarn and I was like, hey, let me try this. Oh, I can tell you the pattern. It's the baby cable hat with ear flaps. She doesn't even give herself credit. Well, it's designed by Margot at my local yarn shop. Anyway, so um, it's a knitted helmet. It's super cute on him. So he's been wearing that as his outdoor helm, outdoor helmet, as his outdoor hat. But indoor hats need to be, you know, more lightweight and he can just wear them around because he's, I mean, it's growing, but it's still, he still needs a hat. And my mother laughs at me because Stephanie, that boy doesn't need to wear a hat all the time, but he does. You lose so much heat through your head, and until he has a full head of hair, he's wearing hats. So, cast on another hat. This is Dreaming Color Classy, I believe. Whatever the worst head weight one is. And it is Lunar Zazzle Colorway. I was actually, I had bought this 
if you watched Expectant Knitter way back in the day. I bought this to do an IT sweater. Um, I bought enough. I bought like two or three skeins of this to do an IT sweater for a baby. Never got the sweater knit and actually I'm using the yarn on the patchwork blanket that I'm slowly picking away and I'll show you when I have some more progress or visible progress on that. But um, yeah, so I've been using this yarn for that. And it's a blue with purples and pale, pale like spots of splotches of pale, pale green in it. So it's very clearly, to me, not so much an it color as it looked in the skein. Or I think I ordered it online from web, so from the picture. I don't know. Lunar Zazzle, to me, is more of a boy color. But uh, anyways, I'm so distracted. <laughs> And, oh, did you notice my hair? Yeah, I did the uh, at home, you know, you buy the box for 28 shampoos, and I did that with what I thought was brown. It ended up looking very red, and, like, it was too much. Like, here's a red streak. Here's a red streak. So then I did, I waited a couple days, a couple shampoos, and then I did brown, what I th thought was a lighter shade of brown thinking and it was and that's usually what I put in my hair is that lighter shade of brown I don't know what I was thinking of that first dark shade of brown low lights um so I put the low one it the lighter shade of brown in my hair and it blended the reds a little bit better but it's still pretty reddish anyways um we'll get my hair color right eventually <laughs> about the time the highlights grow out it'll be the right color so I knit this, him this hat. It is a, I knit it on size fives. I'm totally making this up. I suck as a podcaster. I don't know why you're even watching this because I'm just like, hey, here's a number. That's what it must be. No. Okay. I'm going to think a little harder. No, I knit these on size sevens and it's worsted weight yarn. All of the hats I had knit him up to this point, I was knitting on size fives with DK, maybe worsted, but mostly DK weight yarn. So this hat is huge. <laughs> and I didn't realize how huge it is till I finished and the ribbing doesn't even cinch in around his head like it's a couple fingers loose like I could stick my hand up there and it would still fit him loosely and I just have to say that I paused this and 10 minutes ago I got up and swaddled him and put him down in his crib and turned on the little mobile the bubble bean mobile and I haven't heard a peep from him so he really was fussy cranky tired so babies do do that sometimes and they don't always want to cooperate, but, um, my little hand warmer here, yes, <laughs> it is big for him, but it's finished, so it's going in the, um, outdoor pile, because it's so heavy, for uh, six months from now, no, probably not, but for later this spring, when he needs an outdoor hat, and I can't put him in the helmet, the helmet hat is so adorable, I can't even tell you how cute he is in that, maybe I'll put a picture of him wearing it in here, um, I love it. So, what else do I have to talk about? Christmas knitting. So, I told you by default, I've got, I'm working on some Christmas knitting, which is nice. Like, I should be giving her some Christmas knitting. I was listening to Cast On, and she was talking about felted, uh, I'm so behind on all my podcasts, so I think it was episode 100, and she was talking about felted slippers, then I thought, oh, felted slippers, I could bang out a bunch of those and give them to my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, like a bunch of people for Christmas gifts, but... It's getting close, so maybe next year. Uh, those Christmas balls I was knitting, I need to get back to those and finish that up. Although maybe I won't. I don't know. Next three days from now, I go back to work. Dun, dun, dun! I know, I know. It is early. It's, um, it's after 11 weeks, but they really need me, and I know they really need me, and it's the right thing to do for my working environment. You know, you don't want to screw everybody over just because you can. And Roland, it will be fine here with Steve. So so I'm going back to work next week for a few days. And I'm slowly transitioning back a couple days, three days, four days, five days. Um, and I don't know why I'm telling you that. But I am. Oh, so I don't think there's going to be a lot of time for Christmas knitting. We need to adapt to a new schedule and what that means. But um, yeah. So that's in the future what's going to happen with us. And the next week is also Thanksgiving. I cannot believe it is here. It is here. It's here. <laughs> it's 
So I went shopping last week and bought Roland some pants. Okay, pants. We have a friend that says pants. And it's funny to listen to her say that. Um, we bought, I bought him some pants to wear. And let me tell you, for a baby, I'm not a fan of pants. you got to get the pants off and then undo the snaps and then get to the diaper. It's not worth it. But for one day, okay, he's got the pants. They're not in here. Well, I got him khaki pants to match this sweater. You remember this sweater that we all knit for the knit along? The something yoked sweater. Anyways, I got dark green buttons for Roland's, and so he will be wearing this for Thanksgiving. I will be wearing a, like an orange, like an autumnal dark heathered orange sweater, short sleeve sweater. We will look very cute in all of the family pictures. <laughs> Who knows, it might even be our Christmas card. So he'll be wearing this with khakis, but I also have a pair of jeans because I don't want to make him too geeky wearing khakis all the time. And I couldn't decide about shoes, so he's not going to have shoes. He's just going to wear socks. <laughs> and is it is being a total brat. Go, go do something else. So, yeah, that's what's happening with Thanksgiving. There's so much to pack and think about bringing him that... Uh, I'm just writing less because really you can't start packing anything until it's time to go because he uses those things. So, like the swaddle knees, I, we have two that fit him right now, which is fine. Like two is enough. He doesn't need to have more than two, but you can't pack anything because, you know, the reason we have two is he wears one, he spits up on it, it goes in the laundry, he wears the other one, it, we've had time to clean the first one. So. Anyways, you don't want to listen to me babble about my laundry situation or packing clothes because that is the least fun thing about travel, right? So we're going to my in-laws. That's a cat. <laughs> we're going to my in-laws for Thanksgiving for, I think, four days. We're going to go head up Wednesday night after work and come back Sunday. So sometimes Sunday, probably early Sunday because I have to work on Monday. So that's the plan there and I'm really excited you've heard me talk about Thanksgiving before it's my favorite holiday with his family so um yeah and now we are going to get to the portion of the podcast that relates to the name of the podcast which is share or save welcome to Casa de Knitting Samurai and Steve and Roland this is our entryway it's very exciting isn't it yes you can see the doorway, the front door, and the garage, and the closet. And over there, as most New England homes have, is a bench underneath which are lots of knitted goodness and some store-bought goodness, mittens, gloves, hats, those types of things. And you know how I have spoken recently about cleaning up, sorting through closets, cutting down on the amount of unnecessary stuff in my house. So I thought it would be fun to do a segment where we go through the contents of my <laughs> winter stash here and decide whether it is something that I should save or share with <laughs> the outside world. And by share, more than likely it's going to goodwill. But um, yeah, so I thought we'd go through this basket and figure it out together. <laughs> So, it's a little overloaded and this is a bit overdue, this going through and sorting things out. So, the bike pump and umbrella are definitely staying. And also, there's definitely a theme here of store-bought stuff. So, first up, I guess, are these fingerless mitts that they are made out of alpaca. It is, they are Susie's reading mitts actually. And out of the things in this basket, these are probably what I wear the most. I knit them a couple of years ago and they are great. They usually midwinter end up in the door of my car and so I can just grab them out and put them on and be warm. So they're even getting a little fuzzy, like they're getting actually very fuzzy on the palms, but that's all right. So these are keep, these are safe. Um, this lovely scarf was one of the very first things I knit. Yes, I'm calling it a scarf. It's very, very narrow, as you can see. 
and it's some sort of acrylic yarn. It, uh, I had knit it thinking that it should be, could be worn like this, but I've never worn it. It's itchy. I don't really like it. So this one is definitely going in the share pile. We'll fold it a little bit. Oh, Lane, it's so nice of you to join us. What's this? Oh, a new doorbell. Don't ask. All right, this is a store-bought beanie that um, hubby has never worn. So we'll put that in the maybe keep, maybe not. I think there are a lot of store-bought beanies. Oh, this is a cowl. So every Thanksgiving I tend to knit something. So this I think was my, was two, no, three Thanksgivings ago. So last Thanksgiving I did a Wendy knit shawl. The one before I was working on, mm, I don't know. I can't remember three. So this, three out of four years. So this is one of those years. Anyways, it's a Mobius cowl. I have no idea what the pattern was. It is knit with Malabrigo worsted. Um, it pills like crazy. There's a cat meowing, so I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm just going to jump up. I closed her in the closet door. Okay, so this was knit with Malabrigo worsted. It's a great teal color. I absolutely love it, but I never wear it. So here, I'll show you how it looks put it on like this and it just looks like a mass of stuff around the middle of my neck so this is definitely and it's not warm it doesn't go low enough with a coat like you have probably two inches of underneath exposed I don't like it I don't want it so that's going in the share pile um, next we have a fleece scarf Still has its tags on it. Linus and Izzet are arguing about who belongs in the closet. <laughs> so Linus won and Izzet's coming to see me. So we are going to keep this scarf. Who knows when you need a nice black fleece scarf. And <laughs> there goes Linus. I hope he's not blocking too much of the screen. Um, two more brand new store-bought hats. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be slouchy, but it doesn't quite pull it off. And I know that the seed stitch and the cables are a little too much for Steve to ever wear. So this is going to be a share. Um, this hat is another one still with all the tags on it. Oh my God, it's so tight and small. I didn't knit this. This isn't my fault. But it's a, uh, it's a sample production, sample run. So, um, yeah. That's definitely a share. I'm not keeping a hat that doesn't fit my head. Ooh, but then there's this hat. This is the, um, this is from Boutique Knits. I actually absolutely love this hat. It is, what is this knit with? Let Gems. Yeah, in like some sort of green colorway. It's on my project page. I love this hat. Unless you adjust it right, though, it does look a little odd. But it feels magnificent. Oh my god, the yarn is some, I think it's a Mercerized Superwash. It's really soft. And I love the lace detail right there. And the rib is this really cool, broken, super interesting rib. So, this one's a keeper. Uh, what else do we have here? Ooh, this one, also from Boutique Knits. This one is the um, Sideways Cloche, something Cloche. This is knit with alpaca grande, 100% uh, alpaca yarn. I think it's alpaca grande. It's 100% alpaca yarn in a great red color that doesn't match my red coat, but it's really warm, and I have fond memories of wearing it around Rhinebeck one year. So this one's a keeper, even with a little handle on the side. So we'll keep that one. Oh, this one is not what I thought it was. Yes, it is what I think it is. Well, um, our best friends, the our best couple friends, the guy loves Steve Zizou, whatever, Life Aquatic was Steve Zizou, the Bill Murray movie. Um, the director's famous, I don't know the director. Anyways, he loves it, and my husband's name is Steve, and Bill Murray's sidekick is Steve Esteban, 
And so uh, Nate, our friend, asked me to knit him one of their famous red hats. So I made him one of the red hats and I actually did a black patch with the buttons just exactly like they wear them in the movies. And um, I made Esteban, my husband, one to match so the two of them can wear them together and be quite cute in their Zizu hat. So that one's not going anywhere. It was a giant pain in the butt to knit. This is, if I'm remembering right, this is Reynolds Review, which is 100% Superwash Merino yarn. I knit it on size 5, 2x2 two two rib hat. It took freaking forever, and I did two of them back to back. I love to knit hats now. I don't know why this was such a miserable project for me, but it was. So very much a labor of love. And now Steve mostly wears this when he runs. Like, it's an outside running hat, but it's funny when we ha when we first did it, they, we would have bonfires at their house, and the boys would wear their hats and stand at point and recite lines from the movie because they're that silly and geeky. Um, how about this guy? Woo, this is a beautiful scarf. So you remember the fun fur novelty yarn craze? Well, at the same time, there was a keyhole scarf craze. I'm going to say this was 2004 that I knit this. It is 100% gross. No. <laughs> it's some sort of novelty yarn that I got at uh, Joann's, no, probably Michael's at that point. And it has a little keyhole. I had a black coat at the time, so I would put that through, put on my black coat, and you would never know I had a scarf on. It was perfect. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm never much for a... Uh... <sighs> yeah, I'm not a designer. Or not a designer. I'm not a fashion plate. That's what I'm trying to say. So what a surprise that this was not long lived. So that's definitely a out the door, not saving that. These are fingerless mitts that I got caught up in a craze with the knitters at Rhinebeck. And we bought the bunny yarn. You remember the bunny yarn. You've seen it. Glamour bunny, I think, is what these are in. And she sells a fingerless mitt pattern. I think she actually gives it away with yarn purchase, so we all bought different colors, six of us, bought different colors of this yarn and um, each knit a pair. I have them on, I don't know if you can tell right now, but they are not the same size. Yeah, this one's a little bit longer, plus they, I don't like my fingerless mitts exactly this short, there's no extra fabric, they're too short in the cuff, but it's Angora Bunny. Like, I have a really hard time because I don't want to wear them, but I can't imagine letting them go. So, these are going to stay, but they'll go on the bottom of the bin. Um, what's next? Oh, some poly, some uh, fleece gloves. Linus, your heads, we're keeping those. Linus, come here. Come here. Linus, come on. I think your ear is right in the way. What well, is it's coming here? Next, we have another hat, still with a hat with a tag on it. Well, this one is definitely supposed to be slouchy. All the kids were wearing them. It was a craze last year. And I got my hands on a free sample from the shop. And so I said, mm, okay, I'll try it. Clearly I wore it, right? No. So I'm not sure how it looks on me. I'm going to use this to tell me and help me decide. So we're going to put this in the maybe keep it. Because gray goes good with red. So. Um, what else? Oh, this hat. You know the fake aisle hat? Um, this is Steve's that I knit for him. I'll put it on. But um, this is the one I knit for him using Barocco Jasper is the dark color. And then the gray is 100% um, alpaca yarn of some sort. And this is his favorite hat to wear. It is very, very, very warm. <laughs> so he wears it a lot and that would never leave the house. In fact, I should probably wash it for him because I don't know the last time he washed it. <sighs> Aren't cats wonderful things? You got an ear over here. You got that one trying to get in the shoe closet. We got good old Maccabean walking up next to me. He's such a love bug. He's such a sweet boy. <laughs> I hope you like cats. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Oh, another shop sample that nobody's ever worn. Um, Steve recently shaved his head. Bald. Bald. <laughs> bald. Um, yeah, he shaved all his hair off. He was at, he meant to just trim a little bit, but he shaved the whole thing. And so he tried to wear this hat afterwards. And I don't think he got very far with it because when I put this hat on, it feels like it's cotton and it's very 
fitted. I don't know. I like it. I always like knit hats with brims. They're one of my favorites. You're going to see another one in a minute. Um, I think that's a keeper. I don't know. Although it's that tight on me and his head's bigger than mine. And my hair is so in my face. We'll put that in the think about it pile. Um, what else? This hat, another, no, no. We, these are more shop samples that it's like definitely not going to happen. This is a smart wool scarf. I have the matching hat right here. The hat is adorable. <laughs> Maybe this hat fits rolling. Like, it's ridiculous. This is a woman's hat set. Hat and scarf set. I love them, right? They go great with my red coat. No, but I couldn't resist them and so I bought it and this hat is ridiculously small. See where my ears are? This is not over my ears. And I know there are people who like hats that don't go over their ears. So um, I'm not going to wear this hat, but I'm serious. I'm going to try it on my baby. It might fit him. So I'll put that in the questionable. And even though they're a set and I would like to keep the set, I'm keeping just the scarf. Because those circles are super cute. So here we go. These are color work mittens that I designed very early on in 100% alpaca yarn in orange and purple. I don't know. There, he's moving. Can you see me better now? <laughs> um, yeah, alpaca yarn. And these are, let's see if I can show it. What's the best way to show the pattern? There you go. There is a cat that is meant to look like a Devon Rex. So it has really, that's what my cats are really exaggerated ears and big eyes and um, yeah so I did the cat and then I did this pattern up at the top and pattern down here and then the cuff. The I actually do wear these surprisingly. They are fairly warm. They're not the warmest thing on the planet but they're I don't know I'm kind of nostalgic for them. So there's a cat on the palm and then there's one on the back of the hand but because I was a new knitter at the time it doesn't precisely line up without a lot of tugging. So the second cat is over here. It's not centered on the palm of my hand. Like that's how it comfortably wants. Maybe I've got my hand in the wrong side. Let me try the other side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I'm gone. So there's the cat. And then the tail goes up along the mitten. And so these we're going to keep just because they're nostalgic and they don't really match with anything. I like this. Huh. Um, oh, this is, I don't even know how this ended up in this bin because I already decided a while ago I was getting rid of this, but it's back in this bin. Um, it's a headband. It's a headband. I believe it's the drops, some sort of drops headband design. I knit three of them, a red one, a white one, and a green one maybe. That's why this one stayed because it's the green one and the other two are gone but it has a button on the back and it's basically a hold my hair back I don't really we'll think about that one. Oh, this is the Claudia hat I knit this fall for Steven and he is not wild about this hat I don't know why I like it it's got this lattice detail here and then it does uh, it's like a three by one rib I think up the top but he is not a fan of this hat. But I just knit it, so I'm not ready to let it go. So we're keeping it. Oh, and this is the um, Mission Falls yarn that I wasn't wild about because it has pilling. It was pilling before I was finished knitting it. Um, this, I have to try them on. These are fingerless gloves that I bought for five dollars and that's why I bought them because they're really cute little cables up the hands with a button detail and I couldn't buy yarn let alone buy yarn and take the time to knit them myself so I bought them um, I've already sewn up the holes in the thumbs once this one's ratty looking they're last year they're done I'm gonna give those away although they could benefit from a bath but I'll just give them away oh this one is Hammer Hill? Hammer Lily? It was a really popular um, color work pattern. I bet in 2004. And so this is, I'm gonna, 
take a stab in the dark. The blue, I think, is... I don't know. But I really like it. It's my warm hat. Steve has the fake aisle. I have this one. I think it's Hammer Lily. Lily Hammer? I don't know. Anyways, I like that it looks like stained glass windows. That's what it's always reminded me of. And even though... See, so much of this, how many times have I said this? It doesn't match my coat, but I'm going to keep it. That's my problem with so much of this stuff. Oh, some earmuffs. Earmuffs, so you don't mess up your hair. That sit around the back, 180 degree earmuffs. Yep, I'm going to keep those. I like them. Oh, <laughs> don't you love laughing at yourself for your early on projects? Uh, this is an alpaca cowl I knit myself with, I think, there goes, is it? And there goes Linus. With probably a $15 button on it, a pewter flower. It's really pretty. I knit it so that I could wear it like this under my black coat at the time and have a color pop. Except by the time you, and it was like, use up a skein. I was doing something where I was trying to use up as many skeins as possible. So this is just a single skein of that yarn. And by the time, so it came down nice and low. I had learned after doing the Mobius cowl that I wanted something that would be low enough to um, fit in the V of your sweater, of your coat. But this is not actually warm on the neck. So this is a share. I'm definitely going to cut off. I'm, I'm saving the button. That button is too nice. And I think I'll probably end up unraveling this versus giving it away just because it's it's a really nice alpaca yarn and the pink is super girly pretty something somewhere there's got to be a perfect project for that so that one's going to get unraveled oh you're in for another one i'm not putting this on i have no idea where this even came from but it is another one of those headbands really pretty color work um store-bought definitely although it doesn't really look store-bought but it's got a tag on it that tells me the care instructions and it says made in the USA. So this one's going to share because no one has ever worn it. Ooh, this. Ah. <laughs> this is a cowl that I designed. I think it's like distinguished gentleman cowl for my husband. Yes, you can see it's got lots of nice rolling going on to it. It's a tube. It's super itchy. It's 100% alpaca, but I don't know. They've got guard hair. Something's wrong with this. And he never wears it. So, and that one's going. Um, <laughs> bucket hat! <laughs> they were super popular at some point, And I knit two of them. This is... Did I keep the other one? I think this is the only one I kept. Um, the only time I've ever worn this hat is when the power is out and I have to sleep with a hat on. And how sad is that that I live in a place where that's a trend that has happened more than once. So this is 100% alpaca. This one's frog tree alpaca and the inside burn is a different color and I got this great porcelain button to go with it and I absolutely hate this hat but it's functional. So I'm going to keep it because it's nice and soft and warm. <laughs> Um, oh, boys and girls, thrummed mittens. You remember those, right? They were all the rage for a while back there. And I guess 2006 is when they were really popular. So here's my pair. Um, Cascade 220, not super wash. Who makes mittens that aren't super wash, number one? Number two, um, I got red roving. And I love how they look like little hearts. I think I knit these around Valentine's Day. Not that big a hole. I didn't sew it up very well. And, um, yeah, so they're like these big, heavy-duty mittens. That's great. And here's the inside messiness. I didn't leave them. Uh, my thrums, I think, were they're about that long each. And so they haven't, I haven't worn these very much. Um, they haven't felt it as well as they could have. But the point of thrum mittens, as I see it, is a nice, warm, cozy pair of mittens for outside when you're shoveling. I live in a condo. I never, ever shovel. These can't, I can't drive a car with them. They're very dangerous because they're big on me and they're loose. And 
um, not being super wash, they, I don't trust them to not shrink up and, which, hey, maybe if I did shrink them, they would fit me better. And they do match my red coat. But I hate them. And I've always hated them. I am giving myself permission to share those. I don't have to keep things I hate. So here's a pair of store-bought fleece gloves that clearly match with my red coat. Oh, here's <coughs> another shop sample. We'll keep that one. Um, this is a cowl. The pattern was in an interweave. Um, another 100% alpaca because I, went, I loved alpaca for a really long time and thought that was the only thing that belonged on your head. And yeah, and that's why that green one, that green hat with the argyle that I showed you towards the beginning, that's merino, really surprises me that I like to wear it so much. So anyways, this was a cowl. There was this version in the interweave that this was published in, and then there was a longer version. I knit the short one so I could do it in one skein. And I want to say that this is Fiber Company yarn. I'm not sure which one of their yarns it is, but it's a really nice soft yarn. Again, very short cowl. It gets very little use. And it has buttons on it, great buttons, but it's another one that's tight to get on. And unless my hair is straight and perfect, I don't want to muss it up pulling a cowl down over it. Look at these great cables it has. It's really cute. So even though it's not functional, I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> Speaking of a functional cowl, my knitting group did a cowl swap. Did we do a cowl swap or was it winter stuff? I got a cowl out of the deal anyways. So it's the only time in my life I've ever liked baubles. Um, one of the girls knit this for me and it buttons up. It's a little tight around the top, but what am I complaining about? Like that pink one was so loose it didn't keep me warm and this has the perfect, it goes to the side. Wait, I have issues. I have issues. Um, buttonhole? We'll do one button. When you do it upright, it goes down to the point, has plenty up here to keep you warm. Again, it doesn't match with the red coat, but I still have the black coat and I can wear it with that. And I love this. So, um, Sticks Chicks. Sticks Chick with Sticks. She's in my friends anyways. She knit this. And I love it. So we'll keep that one. Stop laughing. Don't laugh too hard. Are you ready? Yes! Because I wanted a... <sighs> Norwegian baby hat. Yeah, I knit a couple of them with crazy stripes and horns and I said I can make an adult size and wear it. I never wore it. It's just the laugh factor of this hat. It's um, again 100% alpaca. Lots of different alpaca yarns. No. It's just too ridiculous. But maybe I should keep it because of the ridiculous factor. It is ridiculous. Tell me what you think. I'm going to keep that one to think about it. Tell me what you think. Ridiculous alpaca hat with ties. After knitting Steve's <coughs> Fair Isle, no, not Fair Isle, after knitting his Fake Isle hat, I knit myself one using Noro and I'm going to say Black Cascade 220. Um, mine fits very not well. So it has no elasticity in the the ribbing, which I know blocking could fix that, but it's really tight at the top. Like something's off with my decreases and so as I wear it, as the day goes on, it inches up. And in those incident instances when you have no power and you need to wear a hat, this is not a good hat to wear. So as pretty as this is, this is going into the share. Yeah. Share pot. Just because I'm sharing it doesn't mean it has to go to goodwill. Right? Right. This. Am I hearing something? I am. Okay. These are a pair of top-down finger, a uh, pair of top-down mittens that I quasi-designed. I put the pattern on the top of them. I followed someone else's pattern for top-down mittens. And you can see this is 100% Malabrigo. Can you see it? They are a pilly mess. I have to use my sweater stone on them every time I wear them, and even though they fit perfectly, they are probably my greatest knitting success in terms of a pair of mittens. I am not keeping these mittens because I am tired of cleaning them off. 
this is a woolly warm head, woolly warm head hat that uh, one of the knitters in my local group made for me. We were doing a hat swap. And I'm not sure what it's made out of, but it is a very funky hat. And because of all that character, I think I should keep it. So that's a keeper. We're getting there, we're getting there. And then there is this hat, which is poorly designed. It's a lifted stitch pattern, so it has, I love the colors together, I love the hat, it's too small, it just doesn't work for me, so that one, even though it's hand dyed, I believe it's Janet's hand dyed yarn, um, it's going, it's not for, not for keeping. Lastly, this scarf is, was another, uh, swap with my local knitting group, um, Aaron made this for me, he is New Hampshire caver and whoops that's the back side it is a beautiful lace pattern and it's a great scarf so that's a keeper and one more thing that fell out of the basket is this 100 percent alpaca red scarf one of the first scarfs i had um complete with tassels yeah that's not a keeper so there you go the bin is now officially empty except for a pair of mittens that are store-bought fake sheep's wool look at mittens. So, thank you for helping me decide what to save and what to share. This has been very, very helpful. And if you have an opinion about this lovely hat and would like to share it with me, I would appreciate it. Otherwise, it's been another great episode. I've enjoyed talking to you and I will catch back up to you, up with you in the next couple weeks. Uh, take care of yourself and have a great day. Happy knitting!